Hi everyone and welcome to this chapter of Dart Crash Course. In this chapter we're going to talk about enumeration. So I'm going to bring up the terminal in here. Let's just go ahead and say Dart create with a template of console and we're creating a project called enumerations. And we're going to let it do its work. And let's go ahead and say code enumerations like this. Then I'm going to get rid of the uh, terminal and let's change our workspace settings with a zoom level, I believe we've been using six so far. And of course, in the bin folder, like usual, delete the default file, and then we'll create a new file in here, we'll call it example one dart, then get rid of the explorer terminal. And let's just say example uh, one dot dart, if we have FS watch, I think FS watch actually disappear disappear from here. And uh, that is simply I think because I've updated now my um, my uh, visual studio code, and I think the terminal history somehow disappears. So um, and that is that is a little bit uh, unfortunate, but I think I can just copy and paste it from some other place. So I'm going to bring it here. And let's just say example one, like that. And we'll just put a main function in here and see if it works. Let's say print. Uh, print hello world good and now it's working so we can get rid of that terminal window and have this ready for our first example so enumerations allow you to create similar objects in one structure and that is the goal of enumerations in pretty much every program language it's the same in uh, python it's the same in swift it's the same in dart and rust as well and uh, other languages as well such as typescript so Let's have a look at an enumeration, for instance. So let's create an enum in here. The syntax word is that you say enum. And then let's say animal type, for instance. And you can see that your class names and enums um, shouldn't have camel case. So the first letter of the every word should be uppercase and subsequent letters in every word should be lowercase, as you can see in here. So this is camel case and this isn't. OK, so uh, actually, I think this is called Pascal case. Right, I think so. Um, enum animal type, and then in here we open curly brackets, and let's just say we have a, a, a an animal type called rabbit, and we have one called dog, and another one cat. And this is one of the things that you need to learn also about uh, enumerations in Dart, and also with the auto formatting that Dart does. In that, uh, if you go ahead and write your enumerations with the last enum value without a colon after it, then all your enum values are going to be in one line until you hit your natural um, line uh, line break. However, if you put a comma in here and then save your changes, then you can see that the formatter basically places every enum case in its own line. And I personally prefer this. There is a lint rule for this as well that you can enable that will always make it will actually warn you that you forgot the column on the last enum case. So I really suggest that you do this for every enum case. Just put a colon and um, a comma after that. OK, so now, now that we have that, let's go ahead and create a class called animal and uh, it will have every animal will have a name. And every animal will also have a type like this. So we can basically use our enum as a data type now. OK, then we go ahead and create a constant constructor for our class and add our required uh, parameters in here, as you can see. So we have a name and a type that need to be passed into this uh, class. Then when we want to use the animal class, let's go ahead and create a dog and we call this dog woof and we say it's an animal. Uh, and its name is woof and its type is a dog as you can see in here okay i can see github copilot is trying to help me and it's really actually creating classes that i did want to create so woof is a dog as you can see in here so you can drill down inside of your enumerations and you can see uh, animal type dot dog or cat or rabbit and also we have a special uh, values list in here which we'll talk about a little bit later okay so in here, after you've created this woof, then you can go ahead and do some comparison. You can, for instance, say if woof.type is equal to animal type dot dog, then we could say woof is a dog, else we can say woof is not a dog. Okay. Or we could just say cat. So let's try with cat and then in here's type cat, cat, and have a look at the output and it says woof is not a cat. Okay, because we're comparing the 
animal type or the type property of the animal class, which is an animal type with animal type of cat. And if it is a cat, then we say it's a cat. So you can basically do comparisons of properties which are enumerations with each other in darts. Okay. So you can also go ahead and do uh, switches uh, in here. So let's go and say we, we want to find out what type of animal it is. So it is a little bit um, it is a little bit time consuming uh, to go ahead and do if statements for these things. So if you have an enumeration and you want to find out like it, it, this is a, an animal type and you want to find out which animal type it is. In this case, we have only three. So we have rabbit, dog and cat. So if you want to find out exactly what that is and uh, type some information out to the console based on the type of the animal, you could say if woof, for instance, is a cat. Woof is a cat. Else if woof dot type is animal type dog, then you could say woof is a dog. And then you could say else if woof, you get the point, right? So you could just continue this until you actually find out exactly which animal type uh, we have. However, dependent on the enum and the values inside it, like here, we could have perhaps 10 values. This could be quite a time consuming if and else statement to write and also to understand. Now, there's a better way of doing this, and that is using the switch and case statement. So if you say switch and then you say woof dot type in here, you can see actually Visual Studio Code has the ability to complete all the possible cases of the switch statement for you. So you could just go in here, command dot on Mac OS or control dot in Linux and Windows, and you can say add missing case clauses. And you can see it will already add all of these for you. So if you have an enum, uh, in most cases, if you want to compare it with another value, if it's just one comparison, like if you just want to know if it's a cat, then this is completely okay. However, if you want to actually do something based on the various types of values that the enum can be, then I really suggest that you use a switch statement simply because of two reasons. If you switch, then Visual Studio Code, for instance, can help you add all the cases for you. And also, if in future we go ahead and add a new case in here, uh, our, our if statement will not break, but our switch statement will break. Okay, and that's a good thing. Breaking is really good because it signals to us as a programmer that, hey, you've added something to your enumeration that you have not handled. Okay, so let's actually do this uh, right here. So let's write the exact same thing like the switch, but in if and else statements. So we say if animal, uh, sorry, woof dot type is animal type dog. And then we do something else if is a cat or rabbit. So here's our if and else statements. And here's the switch right now. They're working fine. Let's just remove these two do's right now. They're both kind of performing equally. So and it's almost the same number of lines of code. However, if I go in here and add, for instance, a monkey. OK, now you can see in here we get a warning missing case clause. OK, but in our if, if and else statements, we don't get any warnings at all. So this warning is actually really good. It's a plus that we're getting this warning because it's telling us that, hey, you added something in here, but you've not handled it in here. It's probably not intentional and you need to address that. So try to use switch and case statements instead of if and else when you are comparing enumerations. OK, for this particular reason. So let's remove this. And now we can go in here and, and say, for instance, print. And this is a rabbit. And let's see if GitHub Copilot can understand. Yes, this is a dog and this is a cat. Really good. We can save this and then we can go into our console and you can see this is a dog printed in here. If we change the animal type to cat, it will say this is a cat. OK, and then also we have rabbits, which is handled by our switch statement. This is a rabbit. OK. So a few takeaways from this chapter, uh, sorry, this example of this chapter, at least, uh, I hope. So let's close this example one. Let's create example two. And we say example two dot dart. And we create a main function, of course. Let's go to FS watch and say example two needs to be watched. OK, now dart also has something called enhanced enums with values. Uh, however, I find them a little bit uh, strange that they're even called enhanced enums because to me, they don't really enhance anything. They just make enums more complicated and also not as useful as other languages that actually have enums with associated values. So 
uh, a little bit of a backstory to this uh, enumerations in Dart have not been able to have um, associated values. In languages like Swift, Rust, for instance, as well, you can have enumerations where every enum case can carry with it dynamic values. So for instance, in Swift, I'll just type some example in here. This is not going to compile. In Swift, you can go in and create an enumeration and call it, for instance, enum um, object type. Okay. And in here, you could say house, a case of a house. Okay. So you say here, I have a house. And then you could in here say a house has room numbers, room count, for instance, is an integer. And you could have has garage bull. Okay. So these are the properties of a house. And then you can also say case bike. Okay. And the bike could have a brand and it has a basket. Yes or no. So and then you could have all these cases and then you can, for instance, go and say, let car is equal to object type car. Its brand is BMW and it has a trunk. Yes. Or you could create another car and say, well, th this one doesn't have a trunk. Okay. So this is how enumerations work in Swift and Rust, for instance. So you can have every case of an enum have the ability to carry with it values various values that you specify in here of different types. Now, Dart didn't have this possibility and it still doesn't. So a lot of developers ask for this and said, every other language is supporting this. Can we have this in Dart as well? Dart was like, yeah, okay, we'll add something. But what they added is just something that is absolutely not the same as this. <laughs> so I wonder who actually asked for this because I don't find that it actually it adds anything to the language, except that it makes it look a little bit more weird, in my opinion, at least. So let me show you how enhanced enums work in uh, Dart. Okay. So if you have an enumeration in Dart, let's just call it enum car. Okay. Then this enumeration can have properties. Okay. So let's just say a car can have a manufacturer, a model and a year. Okay, that it was made. So, so far, so good. Then you think, well, actually, this this sounds kind of like the Swift example. So we can have properties on an enum. So let's let's just add that. We say final string manufacturer. So this is kind of like how you would do do this in a class. All right. And then we say, okay, it is also has a model and also final int year. All right. Uh, then we go ahead and create a constructor. We say const uh, car. Uh, oops. And like this. So you have to do all of this by hand. And I actually find it easier if we didn't create an enum first. So if you want to have properties for your enums in Dart, it's easier to just say it's a class and then have the your editor create your constructor for you like this. And after you've done this, then you can go and change this to an enum. Okay, it's just so much easier. So that's that. Now that you have properties, then what you need to do, you can you could say, okay, but how do I create my cases? Well, you have to, for instance, go in here and say, okay, I have a Tesla uh, model X. And then in here, this case has to provide values for these. <laughs> like the the case has to hard code the values for these properties. And that's completely against the model that I just showed you, where the programmer can create instances of this enum and pass dynamic values to it. Here in Dart, someone thought it's a good idea to go ahead and say, well, you have to hard code these now because this is an enum. But why? We could have already done this with a class. What's the point? Well, no one knows the point. So but that's how it is at the moment. And this may change in Dart 3, which is coming next year. So I really hope someone gets to their senses and completely deletes this functionality because it makes absolutely no sense. So let's go in here and say, okay, now Tesla Model X has a manufacturer. True is Tesla. And we say its model is Model X and year is 2015. Or let's actually say 2023. Okay. And then after you've done this, you have to always ensure that you end the last case of your uh, enum. At the moment, this is the only case, but it's also the last case. You have to end it with a semicolon. Otherwise, you get all these weird errors as well. So this is another downside of these enhanced enums. Okay. So, and then in here, your constructor also needs to be a const. So now you can see we have a car enum with one case in it. And this case has hard coded values. <laughs> Who wants this? I don't know. So uh, what other languages do, they say this manufacturer is a string. That's what other languages do. 
and the uh, and, and they say this is a string and this is an int now you go and create an instance of this and pass these values yourselves not that the enum itself is hard coding these and there actually is no way for you now to create a car uh, with this tesla model x case for instance and pass another year it's just not possible you've hard coded that that's it you can't create a another case basically from outside this enum all these cases and all these values have to now be hard coded with, <laughs> within this enum so sorry i i i i laugh a little bit because i find this feature quite funny uh, and then let's just copy this and paste it in here and then we say we have a tesla model y this case and then we say model y and then it's also produced let's just say 2022 okay so the cases are separated from each other using a comma um and then uh, the last case also has to have a semicolon all right so after you have that after we've created that let's let's just go ahead and create a class so we say we have a person and every person has a name final string name and every person will have to have a car Okay, so this is not like real life. Not every person has to have a car in real life. And let's create a const out of this and two required uh, parameters as well. Okay, then what, we, what we're going to do is to go ahead and create an instance of this person with a car. So we say final uh, foo is a person and this person uh, has a car. And now you can go ahead and use this model X or model Y hard coded values that we've created. So we say it's a, it has a car of type model X in here. Okay. And then we say it's uh, his or her, her name is Foo, like this and that. All right. Now, if you've created an instance of a person with a car, then you can switch actually on that car. And we can say switch uh, foo.car. And then we add the missing cases. And then in here, it completes it for you. So if the car is a model X, then in here, you could just say foo uh, print. Let's just say print uh, foo has a Tesla model X and it's equal to foo dot car like this. All right. Or here in case of model Y, you could say that it is a model Y and it's equal to that foo car. So let's see how things are going. And, if, and here you can see the statement says foo has a Tesla model X car is Tesla model X. But remember, since car is an instance of this enum, it has three properties, manufacturer, model and year. So we could go ahead and override its two string function. We could say two string actually is a getter, I think override to string and we could say car is has this manufacturer so let's just say manufacturer model and year and then we go back to our print statement and you can see in here it says foo has a tesla model x and it says car tesla model x 2023 okay so that's that's what uh, dart calls enhanced enums but i would call it just like strange halfway implemented enums with hard-coded values that no one needs and no one asks for. So, but that's the reality of things that we're in. I think it's important that we bring up these issues, or at least I feel like this is a really weird implementation. And to be honest with you, I could actually go ahead on a tangent here and uh, we could have a look at an example of um, an example of how Swift, for instance, does it. So we could say testing Swift, okay? And I could just save it in iOS in here. Let's go and save it in here. Now I bring up our Xcode. Let's go to our other desktop where we were. Okay, I wonder if I can actually move this, but not moving it is also okay. Let's just go and increase the size of this. Or has it just crashed or something? Here, okay. And we will decrease the size a little bit so we can see how it looks like. I'm gonna get rid of the um, preview and hopefully you can see the content. So I'm gonna get rid of some distractions to the left and right also do this so this is how you would do that implementation in swift you could you could go and say enum car okay and then you would say um case model x and in here you could say uh you could say in here manufacturer is a string year is an int and that's it and you could say model y and you could say manufacturer string okay and year is an int and you could also say uh, engines engine count because you know, Tesla's you can have various engines like you have two or three engines so in here and you could say uh, let model y is car model y uh, sorry model y 
you can see and it asks you okay pass these values now you said that um, model y has three properties pass these in so it's very simple to basically create dynamic enumerations uh, with dynamic values and this is not possible at the moment and i really want to know who asked for this feature <laughs> but that's okay that's enough about the ranting let's close this we're done with example two let's go to example three now okay and we create a main function in here and uh, we go and create a uh, example three that's it and i think uh, we can save this and uh, start working on our example three now um switches also can have uh, default values and let's, let's let's just talk about the default cases sorry not default values but default cases so if you create an animal type in here enum okay we say rabbit dog and cat now if you go ahead and say final whiskers uh, whiskers is an animal has an animal type of cat and if we switch we say switch uh, whiskers like this okay we can go ahead and ask visual studio code to complete all these cases for us but we're very interested in the cat uh, because we we kind of like expect whiskers to be a cat so let's just put the cat case on top and we're, we're just going to say print this is a cat okay and you can see there is a break and uh, then we have rabbits and dog in here but we're not so interested in that so what we want to do and what we want to say to dart is that if it's a cat do this otherwise do something else so we don't want to say if it's a cat do this if it's a rabbit don't do anything if it's a dog don't do anything if it's something else don't do it we just want to say if it's a cat do this otherwise do something else and that otherwise inside switches is done using a default case so you go ahead and remove these you don't write a case you just say default and then you could say this is not a cat all right that's it so if you run this example now you can see it's saying this is a cat but if you change it to a dog it will say this is not a cat all right and also the good thing about this default is that it, it handles all future cases as well so you could go in here and say this is a monkey okay and you can see your switch doesn't give you any warnings however i also need to tell you because we need to talk about good uh, programming practices usually default cases are kind of like an anti-pattern they're trying to cover all cases that you haven't even written in your enum so i try to avoid default cases unless I'm 100% sure that this is what I want to do, okay? So I always ask myself when I have a default case, do I want to be able to ignore future values of this enum? Because if we had this uh, pattern, we said case animal type dog and case animal type dot, uh, let's say, what was the other one, rabbit? Then we could in here just say break, don't do anything, okay? And this, this would also work. But the good thing about this example is that you can see dog is falling through to rabbits and rabbit is just breaking. So these two aren't doing anything. But the good thing about this kind of uh, switch statement is that if I add something in here, then we get that beautiful warning, right? But if you write the default case in here, let's go back to default. And if I add monkey in here, monkey, then we don't get a warning. So that warning is really good. Just keep that in mind. Okay, that warning is almost essential, I would say, to almost all switch statements, unless you are 100% sure that you don't want to handle anything else except for the cases that you have handled, okay? And usually that's not the case, but you may actually find some um, places in your application where you want to handle only specific cases and 100% sure only those and no other cases in the future, okay? So keep that in mind. And so the point of this example was really just this default statement in here. Okay. Now uh, let's go and close this example three and we create example four. Oops. Uh, example four dart, uh, our main function and fswatch, of course. Let's go in here and say fswatch example four. Okay. Save it and get rid of the terminal for now, at least. Now, enums in uh, dart you can also create instances of them from a string okay so how do, how does that work so let's say you have a string let's say you get this string from a json so your json could look like uh, let's say this let's oops if i can type it's like i forgot how to type let's say you have a json and here it says name 
uh, is a foo and type is a cat something like this okay and you actually have a um a class in your dart application called person with a name property and also a uh, actually person can't <laughs> can't be a cat uh, let's just call that class a, an animal and every animal has a name and a type all right and then your type is an enum which we could call an animal type how do you instantiate like you get this JSON cat, how do you instantiate an, an animal type, which is an enum in your application from a string? So that's what we're going to do in this uh, example. So let's go ahead and create a, an enum. Let's just say animal type, animal type in here. And we say rabbit and we have dog and cat. Really good. <clears throat> now, what we want to do, we want to go ahead and take a string and create an animal type from that. So let's say animal type and we optionally create it because this string provided might not be able to uh, be a valid. It, it may not be a valid animal type. So let's say animal type. We optionally create it and we say animal type and we take a string parameter and we say string from SDR like this. OK, and in here, let's just create this function and we say, OK, now we want to create a, an animal type optionally from a string. So then what we what we're going to do is to say animal type values. And this is that special values list. Every enum has a property called values, which is the collection of all all those enum cases. OK, so let's let me show you an example. Let's go in here and say animal animal type dot values. And let's print this guy to the console and have a look at the results. You can see it says animal type dot rabbit animal type dot dog animal type dot cat. And if you add something in here, let's just say monkey, you can see then monkey is also pre present in here. So let's remove that monkey here. OK, so if we go in our function and say, OK, we have all those values. All right. So let's say we get animal type and then we say values and then we want to find the first element of this list that Mac that has the name equal to our um, to our string. Let me just explain that uh, one more time in here. Let's let's take this um, actually not one more time, but let me just explain it a little bit more. Let's say animal type animal type dot cat. OK, if we have this cat, every enum uh, case has a property called name and also has an index, but we specifically want the name. And if I print this like this, you can see in the case of a cat, we actually get cats. And that's what we want, because our string is also going to say cat. And we can compare it with the name of that animal type. OK, so let's go ahead in here and say animal animal type dot values. And then we say the first element where the elements uh, name is equal to from SDR. OK, so and also uh, if you have a look at this, uh, because this this could actually be null. So if we print this. Let's say print. Actually, I think it could crash. Let's say blah and print it to the console. So let's see what happens. I think we get a little crash in here. There we go. So we get bad state, no element. All right. So because we're saying first where and then it doesn't produce any element because it's like none of the elements in this enum have the name blah, then we get a crash. So so in order to catch this, let's say try and then we say catch an exception in here and we return this. Let's say return this. We try to return it. OK, if we don't succeed, we just return null like this. All right. And then we could go in here like that. So now our function is ready. What we could do is to go ahead and have a void function in here. Let's call it describe and we say animal type. Animal type. OK, and uh, like this. So then we will have a switch on the animal type, as you can see in here. And it's, uh, let's just say this is a rabbit. Uh, this is a dog. And we say this is a cat. And we don't have to have actually wait a minute. Do we have to have a default? Do we add a monkey in here or something? Rabbit, dog, cat, uh, rabbit, dog, and then cat. And I think if we remove this default, it's interesting for null. Oh, because animal type is an optional. OK, so um, 
right? Because we're taking an optional animal type. Okay, so we have a simple function here called describe, which takes an animal type and it's, and it's just trying to say what it is. So given an animal type, just tell us what it is. Okay, then what we can do since we have the describe function and also another function to extract an optional animal type from a string, we can call this animal type first like this, we say from string, and let's say, let's just say rabbit. And then we call the describe function with the result of this function. So we have rabbit, let's add a few more cases, we say dog, and then we say cat and also an animal type that doesn't exist. So horse, if we pass an animal type that doesn't exist to the animal type function, it should uh, produce an exception in here, no element, and then it comes to catch produces a null, this null will then get passed here. And it won't fit many, basically the rabbit, dog, or cat, and it will come to the default case and we'll just say unknown animal. All right. So let's just run our code and see what happens. Uh, here, FS watch, and then save the code. There we go. So here it says this is a rabbit, this is a dog, this is a cat, and then unknown animal. Okay. So this was just a simple example of how you can create enumerations uh, from string. And this is very useful for when you're doing like uh, JSON parsing, for instance. Okay. And hopefully you don't have to do too much JSON parsing, to be honest with you, if you're using open API, or if you're using, for instance, uh, Firebase, you, you don't really have to do so much parsing. Uh, a, a lot of things are pretty much done for you. Uh, and also there are some other packages uh, available, which will do all of that for you. So let's close this example four and we say example five dot darts in here and we create a main function like we usually do. And let's go ahead in here and just say example five in FS watch as well. Okay. Now switches in, um, in Dart have a, a concept called fall through and fall through is also available in Swift and it is actually a lot more evident in Swift than it is in Dart. And fall through is where you want a case to go to the next case. So the case itself may not do anything. Okay. So you basically, let's just, let's actually, instead of me uh, talk about the concept, let, let me just show you how it works. So I'm going to say vehicle type in here. Okay. Let's say vehicle type. And then we say car, truck, uh, motorcycle, and then, uh, we have a bicycle as well. Okay. Then we say uh, final vehicle is equal to a car. And then we want to switch this. We say switch on this vehicle. Okay. And then we ask Visual Studio Code to complete all these cases for us. Let's say that in case of motorcycle, bicycle, and car, motorcycle, bicycle, and car, let's bring them here, here, and then by motorcycle, bicycle, and car like this. Let's say in all these three cases, uh, let me also remove the to do's here, here, and here. So we don't get these weird warnings in here. Let's say, uh, in all these three cases, you want to do a specific task. Let's say you want to say print, uh, most common personal vehicles. Okay. And they say, Oh, I want to do the same thing for bicycle. Oh, I want to do the same thing for car. So how do you avoid duplicating code like this? And well, the it is very simple. Actually, what you need to do is to have the last case handle the code and have all the other cases just do nothing. So not even break. So then we can remove this from here and also remove this from here. And this is basically how fall through works in Dart in that these three first cases will do this code and then break out of the switch. And also the last case will break and not do anything. And we could print something in here and say, we could say usually used for work. Okay. When we have a truck, that's it. So, and also, uh, you, since we're handling all the cases for a vehicle, we don't have to have a default. And if you say print, hello, this is actually not required in Swift. You get a warning. If you do stuff like this, like in Swift, if you go ahead and say, uh, you have animal type, animal type, and then you say case, um, rabbit and dog and cat. And if you say, um, let animal is an animal type cat. Okay. And then you say switch animal, animal, animal like this. So you have your cases, you can say print rabbit. Okay. And then you can say print dog, and then you can say print cat. And if you go ahead and say, I have a default case in here and say print hello. Okay. 
I believe we got a warning. They may have changed this in the latest versions of Swift. I'm not sure about that. Actually, we're getting a lot of errors at the moment. And this could be, uh, yeah, statements are not allowed at top level. Okay, so let's create a, a funk blah in here like this. And then we run this and you can see um, it is actually saying def default will never be executed. Well, because it won't, right? It understands that animal type only has three cases and then there, you are handling all three cases. So default is not needed, but Dart isn't unfortunately yet that advanced. So it doesn't understand that this will never be executed. So it, it won't tell you. Okay, there may be some linter rules, but I expect this to be the default uh, behavior of a language to tell me that this default case is not needed. So just so you know, the default case isn't needed. We have handled all the cases so we can remove that. And this is how you would do fall through in uh, Dart on enum cases. Okay, and, and you can actually see the result. This is most common personal vehicles and we can change this to a truck and then we get the last case, which, which is saying usually used for work. Okay. Good. Let's close example five, go to example six dot dart and also main function. Of course, uh, we'll do our usual dance of FS watch as well here. Okay. Now, um, enums can also use mixins. Now we haven't really talked so much about mixins, but we'll, we'll do that later, but I'm kind of assuming that you already know about mixins. Mixins are similar kind of like to your protocols in Swift and also interfaces in uh, TypeScript. If you're familiar with that, and um, what else? We also have, I think, interfaces in Java uh, in languages like Java, okay? So mixins are kind of like that. Let's say that we have a mix in here. Let's say we call it can jump, okay? And we say any mixin and any object that conforms to this mixin has to have a property. And we say int get feet count. So any, like for instance, um, any object that doesn't have two feet let's say um can't uh, actually let's say le less than one feet so no feet basically so any object that has no feet cannot jump all right this is what we want to achieve and we have a void function in here jump and then we say if a feet count is less than one then we say uh, throw an exception exception uh, cannot jump okay and otherwise we print we say jumped all right, so this is our contract. We say any object that wants to conform to this mixin has to have a property called feet count. Then if anyone calls the jump function on us or on that object that conforms to us now, then we check for feet count. If we don't have any feet, we throw an exception. If we have feet, then we say jumped, okay? So let's go ahead and create an enum now, an enhanced enum as Dart calls it, or as I like to call it, unenhanced enum. We say enum animal type, Okay, and then we say with can jump. All right, now you can see we get uh, errors in here simply because this enum doesn't actually conform to can jump. So let's go ahead and we say we override uh, final int feet count like this. And then we need to create a constructor for our enum. Okay, so we say const animal type and then we say required this uh, required this dot feet count. All right, we're getting all of these warnings to be honest with you because um we don't have cases in here so let's create a cat we say cat has feet count of four and then we close it off all right and let's see what we're getting in here semicolon okay there we go so a cat has four four feet then we say we have a dog with feet count four and then we have fish a little fishy here that doesn't have any feet all right and semicolon to end it all so then we go ahead in our main function and we say um animal type dot dog now all of a sudden since animal type conforms to can jump then it, it every case of this animal type will have a jump function there we go okay so we say dog jump then we say cat jump and then we'll cry, it create a little try statement try catch and we want to ask the little fishy to jump as well so we say fish dot jump and in the catch we say uh print fish cannot jump all right and let's see the console and you can see and basically our dog is jumping cat is jumping and then fish cannot jump all right so this is how you would conform an enumeration to a mixin with properties uh, that the mixin constrain its uh, subtypes to okay that's example six so let's go to example seven without wasting any time main function and our fs watch as well in here so example seven like that good 
Uh, and uh, I think we've done everything. It's ready for, uh, ready to go basically. So now you can also add uh, functions to enumerations both inside the enum and outside of it. Okay, so let's for instance have have a look at how we can do this. We let's we create an enum. We again call it animal types. Lots of animal type examples, but this is okay. Dog and rabbit. Okay. And so these are our animal types. And in here, we want to create a function within the enum. And you can do that. You can just say run and we say print running. Okay, boom, 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 like that. And just remember, you in order to have functions inside your enums, you have to close the last enum case with a semicolon. If you had a colon in here, this wouldn't work. Semicolon is essential in here. Okay, otherwise, this just won't compile. You can also create extensions on your enumeration. So you can say extension jump on animal type, and then you can add a function in here. You say void jump. Okay, and then you can say, this is uh, jumping like this, boom, boom, boom. All right. Now we can create an instance of our animal type, let's say animal type, uh, and then we say cat, and then we first make a jump, and then we make it run. Okay. And then we go to create a, a dog, we do the same, and then we say rabbit jump and run. So if you look at the uh, console, it says cat is jumping and then running, dog is jumping and then running, and rabbit is jumping and running. And it's just saying running dot 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 because here we just typed that. We could say dollar this is running. So it's similar to the jumping case, okay? And if you run our example, you can see now these statements are kind of similar to each other. Cat is jumping and running, dog is jumping and running, and rabbit is jumping and running. Okay, so that's an example for adding functions to an enumeration both inside the enum itself and using an extension. All right, let's go to example eight now. So we say example eight dot dart, and we create our main function in here, and of course the usual dance. Let's go to FS Watch in here. FS Watch example eight save our changes and that's good to go. Now you can also implement a comparison on enumerations. Okay. So let's say that you have an enum of Tesla cars. We say enum Tesla cars. Okay. And we go ahead and then as I, as I mentioned, like if you have properties for your enums, like you're using these things that Dart calls enhanced enums, it's actually best uh, to first create a class. So we first say it's a class and we say every Tesla car has a weight in kilos. Okay. Weight in kg. We create a constructor. We make it a const. Then in here we say it's a required property like this. Okay. And then uh, we can actually do a, uh, we can actually do a comparison now. So we want to make sure that this Tesla cars enumeration, we're going to compare it. Uh, sorry. We're going to convert it to an enum. Don't worry about that. But let's just say this implements comparable and Tesla cars like this. Okay. And so we're implementing this comparable, I think it's a mix in is it actually an abstract class. Okay. So let's go ahead and um, create the one missing override. And you can see this override says, okay, give me an integer by comparing this current instance of Tesla cars to another Tesla car. So how do we do that? Well, what we want to do is just to say, okay, a Tesla car that has a higher weight is it should appear before a car that has a uh, lower weight. So the comparison is done basically on the weight. So let's go ahead and say we say weight in kilos. We want to compare that to the other cars weight in kilos. Okay, so this is our implementation. So comparison of Tesla cars in this case is done using their weight. After having done that, then you can convert this to an enum. Okay, because otherwise you will get a lot of errors before doing all of this work. So we convert it to an enum and then we say, okay, we have a model Y its weight in kilos is let's say uh, 2.2. All right. Then we create some other models. So I have these models already ready. I'm just going to plug them in here and see model S is 2.1 model three is 1.8. And these are just like made up numbers. Okay. So no one says that these are the actual scientific and correct values, just some numbers. Okay. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and say, okay, uh, print Tesla cars dot values. Let's see what the values actually tell us. Then you say we have Y, S, 3, and, uh, and X. Let's comment that out. Then we, what we could do is to go ahead and say, okay, we want to sort all these models by their weight. Since we've com uh, 
created a, a, basically we've implemented comparable we can issue sort on a list of tesla cars so if you say uh, tesla cars dot values like this and we want to sort them but if you say sort like this let's actually print this and see what happens you can see we're getting an error uh, because this sort wants to sort you can see it's a void function it wants to sort this array Okay, so what we need to do is to create a, a copy of that array like this, and then we call sort on it and return the value. Okay, so let's print this. Now you can see if we print the default values, first we get model Y, S, 3, and X. But if you sort them and print them, you get 3, S, Y, and X. And that's because their weights are in that order. So S is the least, uh, actually 3 is the least weight. Then we have model S, which is 2.1. Then we have model Y, which is 2.2. And then model X, which is the highest. Okay, so this was just an example of how you can implement an abstract class of comparable on your enum. So this was the last example of this chapter. We've now talked quite a lot about enums and enhanced enums in Dart. And just know that enums are still like work in progress uh, in Dart team, I know. And they really don't have the functionality of most modern enums in uh, sorry uh, most enums in um, other programming languages like swift and rust and uh, typescript uh, these languages have a lot more advanced enum implementations than dart has and i think since dart is set to be a modern language it has to be on par in a lot of its uh, core functionalities with other languages if i create for instance if you are a car manufacturer and I am competing with you in producing new cars, such as like if you were Tesla and I was Volvo and I was producing cars that were not on par with yours, then everyone will just look at me and like, what are you doing? Because, well, you are a modern car manufacturer. Tesla is a modern car ma manufacturer. Why doesn't your car have this and that? And I think it's a quite a valid argument to use for Dart as well in here. So, well, you are trying to be a modern language and you don't have the features of other modern uh, languages. You need to really be on par. And I think a lot of these features that I'm talking about are coming to Dart, but they just need to be produced uh, hopefully a little bit faster, or we just have to wait a little longer. Okay. So that was that for this uh, chapter. Talked a lot about enumerations and I really hope to see you in the next chapter.